assuming that you're here because you're going to be playing with man forever, probably in the future, or there's a chance that you just got back from the gig and your mind is blown and, and you're just you're sobbing, you're, you're, bro you're a broken person and you're trying to pick up the pieces. Either way, this video is going to show you each component part of the composition and the philosophy behind it and hopefully prepare you for what's going to go down. So the piece we're going to be doing um, most likely is Surface Patterns. It's the first jam on the Thrill Jockey record that I sent you, hopefully. May 15th. It's 18 minutes on the record, but we're going to be doing it for 30. So get your head wrapped around that. When I talk about music, I, I, I say I tend to say jam. It's kind of just hippie language. It's not a jam. It's not an improvisation. It's not a forum for you to be soloing and shredding and impressing the ladies or the dudes. You can definitely do that on your next solo album. You can talk to me after class about that. But, but for this particular piece, it's more about melting into the hole and not ripping solos. Okay, so it's called Surface Patterns because it's trying to replicate the experience of looking at the surface of a river as it approaches and cascades over a waterfall. It's really a meditation for both the listener and for the performer, a kind of a glacially paced, static sound. So the piece starts with just drums, and the drums go for about three to five minutes. Around that time, the bass should enter assertively. And the bassist is playing two notes. That's it. It's an F and an E flat. The first person we'll talk to is Richard, who plays bass. I play two notes. Okay, what are those notes? F and E flat. Okay. There used to be no embellishment going on. Right. Just the two notes. Right. Um, but then you told me I could do whatever I wanted to. <laughs> So the bass really gives the piece a coherence and a center, and the thing to focus on with, with the bass is sustain and intensity and low end, and also not to worry too much about a pulse. You're not, you don't need to play the notes at exactly the same time each time. Variation is good. The other thing to think about is changing the timbre slightly each time you play a note. It's not always going to be different, but keeping that in the back of your mind will help lend the piece some variation. Uh, the next instrument to come in is a woody. Uh, if you don't understand what I mean by a woody, I'm really pissed off because that's a word that Oneida made up and you should know it by now. But what it actually means is an electric combo organ, like a Farfisa or an Ace Tone or a Vox. Yeah, I, I have my own Ace Tone and uh, amp, so you'll be playing my Woody. Um, I'm Sarah, I play Woody. Probably the person who's played the Woody part the most. You do a, an amazing job of that. It's just, it, 
incredibly uh, meditative on the interactions between the different held notes. Is that is that accurate? Took the words out. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing when you're playing this part of the song? What are you thinking about? What are you trying to do? Uh, I guess I'm thinking, don't solo, don't solo. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the, the Woody that we're going to have has the keys marked, so you, you, won't, you won't actually have a whole lot. You don't even need to know. Yeah, I couldn't tell you the notes, sir, but tell you the notes. The piece involves a series of notes that are marked on the keyboard. It's a phrase. You're meant to play it at a glacial pace. The phrase shouldn't really be discernible, but there is one. You enter in at about seven minutes from the start of the piece. Okay, so the next thing that comes in is the guitar. You're coming in at about 10, 12 minutes, something like that. It's really you're entering at will. This is showtime, he plays guitar. Rule number one, you're gonna need to get yourself a hunger. This piece does not work if your guitar's tuning pegs are north yeah. By the time the guitar comes in, when we say the notes are being held, it's not uncommon for a single note to be held for 45 seconds. I mean, it, can, it doesn't have to every time, but the brother's changing, when he feels a change, it's sustaining as long as he feels it. As the guitar player, you're just drinking your beer, waiting to come in. By the time that organ comes in, your shit is a little, you know, things just got a little twisted on you, but you're like, this is really cool. I'm gonna need another beer. That would always call showtime. <laughs> Guitarists should be striving for some tone with some gain, definitely. Maybe some effects, but not an extreme sound. You're not trying to create a noisy backdrop necessarily. My approach is I, I listen to the timbre of the chord that's being formed by those two, and I listen to the harmonic content of it, and I try to layer in a sustained note that forms an interesting complement. Every note is fair play. All you need to do is listen and really feel what's going on and, and move with it. There's a world of sound to it. By the time Richard comes in, he's sustaining, you know, one of those notes again, this is important. F, F <laughs> and D sharp. F and D sharp. That's also E flat. Well, which one is it, dude? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is for the drummers. Really, all we're doing is we're playing a single stroke roll as evenly and as quickly as we can for 30 minutes straight. That's it, that's the only thing we're doing. But if you've never done this before, it's way harder than you think. I, I suggest you practice your single stroke rolls for about two weeks every day leading up to performance. The reason that I recommend that is more for your enjoyment because if you don't have it practiced, it actually hurts a lot. We don't want you to be hurting. The way to practice is, is real basic. Um, you should focus on playing a single stroke roll evenly and slowly. I mean, don't, don't play on your leg, but play on a, like a pillow or even the, the actual drum for 15 minutes and then do another 15 minutes of actual like playing tempo. So let's talk real quick about technique. The important elements of this role are evenness, tempo, a steady tempo. The point is not to like speed up and slow down and like ride the piece. The other thing to keep in mind is it, it's really not important to play hard. All the effects that we're going for are gonna be there and they're gonna be more audible if you're not wrecking the drum. You want to really let the, the rebound of the head kind of dictate your attack. And it's also not a huge deal to pace yourself. I, in fact, I just did a version of the piece with a drummer that played 
really slowly, and it was amazing. There was a, tons of interesting patterns that emerged from the drum. What we're really trying to do is play out of sync. All right, so how do we end this thing? At 30 minutes, about that time, I will give a cue. I lift my sticks up off the snare, and I hold them above my head clearly, and everybody else keeps playing and holding whatever they're doing, and then when I bring my sticks back down onto the snare, we do a hard stop, and we're done. So that's it. Uh, we finished the piece. We congratulate each other, we chill out, we have a beer. We look around the room and realize there's nobody left. Mission accomplished. Looking forward to meeting you in person. Thanks for watching and thank you for playing with me and Man Forever.